yeah. I love my HBCU. Uh. And boy, boy, I love it, love it. Yeah. I love it, love it. Yeah. I love my HBCU. Yeah. And man, yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. Man. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. 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 I tune into the HBCU Sports Lab to see if my team won a loss. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, she tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, he know what he be talking about. Mike and Charles, they know what they be talking about. They can press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they won a loss. Yeah, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, uh, yes sir, yes sir, and pay attention, he's going to teach a lesson. Yes. Welcome to episode 541 of Inside the HBCU Sports Lab radio show and podcast, the show that's covering the sporting HBCU diaspora, all things HBCU sports for institutions large and small from the NAIA to the NCAA. We share insights and information on the sports culture and HBCU athletic aesthetics to facilitate the story of HBCU athletic programs and the business of HBCU sports. Brandon King is on assignment. My name is David Rhodes, and we also have Jeff Johnson. We're trying to do something different here for Dr. Cavill show, and I would like to say it is an honor to, to have the opportunity to do this. We're going to primarily focus on the Indies, but we're also going to talk about some of the other HBCUs as well. But this is going to be primarily our perspective from the independents, as Dr. Cavill would say, Hampton, North Carolina A&T, and Tennessee State at the, at the major level. Um, we are filming from our home studio, sending a loud signal. At KCOH 1230 AM Studios with the Texas Radio Hall of Fame, Ralph Cooper in beautiful home of Texas. Well, not at Texas News, but at my house and at Jeff's house as well. <laughs> um, so, Jeff, man, I appreciate you coming to do the show. As For those who don't know Jeff, he's one half of the HU pirate ship that covers Hampton, Hampton University Athletics. And it's great to see you on the show, man. How's things, man? Oh, man, things are lovely, man. We're, you know, blessed, man. Blessed to be here. You know, <laughs> Just, you know, it's fall time, so it's football time. So, you know, we're definitely excited about that. And, you know, I just love being on being on this platform. Uh, and this is the best time of the year because that's when the drama gets started. So love yeah, being we, here. We got a lot of the drama already. That's for sure. So far, so yeah. good with the drama. Now, um, so we got a good one for you guys today. We got a couple of topics, but let's talk about some news that's been going on in the, in, in with regards to Tennessee State and Hampton and other things in HBCU. Um, so Jeff, what you got for us? All right. So just, well, first of all, Hampton, you know, we lost to, uh, Morgan state. That was the biggest one, uh, that we had, uh, I would say as far as Hampton is concerned, but, uh, Morgan state under David Wilson, you know, he really played, uh, he, we, when we watched him over at Bowie state, we knew this guy was going to be one of the up and coming coaches in the HBCUs. And I just know, I think quietly, He's building a program because he beat Richmond last year and Richmond was a playoff team last year. And so I would say that's pretty much one story. Second story I wanted to go with is um, Tuskegee's uh, fall to Johnson C. Smith, you know, and the CIAA domination of the uh, SIAC. You know, Tuskegee I was has always been a perennial power. And just watching them uh, just fall to Johnson C. Smith, you know, that, you know, and that score was, it was pretty much close for the majority of the game, but it ended up uh, Johnson, Johnson Smith, C. Smith got away with a 21 to 13 victory. So, um, and then, you know, they're going into uh, the BT Harvey to play Morehouse next week. So um, I'm interested in to see how the CIAA, you know, performs, you know, against this, uh, SIAC in the next coming couple of weeks, because I would Definitely pretty shocked. And last one I would say is Clark Atlanta. Keep your eyes out on them. And so that's pretty mm -hmm. much it. I will say this about, about Johnson C. Smith. It's amazing to see where they came from. Because I remember yeah. when I was younger, man, they yeah. never was really good. They weren't good. Yeah. And now, like, they're a legitimate threat to win the CIAA. I mean, we still got to worry about the Virginia schools. We got Virginia yeah. Union, Virginia State. Uh, but I uh, think Johnson C. Smith – could surprise some folks and they might they might get an opportunity to have a chance to get into that CIAA championship game. <laughs> so the big article I want to talk about, we're going to veer off from football for a couple of seconds. Um you know the C we're both both of our institutes are in the CAA and uh Tyne Ross mm -hmm. was impressive in his collegiate debut in, in volleyball. She won the CAA rookie of the week. Mm -hmm. Um so she 
you know, we played North Carolina Central, our, which I aptly call the school down the road. <laughs> we played them two straight games. Um, we played one game in Greensboro, played the first the opener in Greensboro, and then we went to Durham to their place, and we ended up sweeping both games. But um, in the back-to-back matchups, uh, Ross had a historic night. She had 15 kills, and that's the most that an Aggie freshman ever had in a collegiate debut. Debut. So shout out to her and the and the conference award, the weekly conference award that she received. So now I'm going to get into I will get into Winston Salem State and uh, A&T. We're going to get into that game later today. And we're also going to get into the history of and to y'all rivalry game that y'all got too. Oh, we both got CIAA. Old school CIAA rivals coming, oh. coming to our town this weekend. But we'll get into that. Oh. We'll get into <laughs> that. Sure We're going to get into that later in the show because we got to have a discussion point about it. And you you might not like what I think about your game, sir. So it'll be. <laughs> we won't either. It, was gonna, it will be a fascinating discussion. Uh, but shout out to Chuck Hunt in the chat. Shout out to James Knox and HBCU Band Talk in the chat. Shout out to Edwin. Pre- appreciate you guys watching, man. I really appreciate the support with regards to the show. Uh, we got the Wildcats in here. We got we got your rivals in here, man. We got Virginia Union in here, so it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun one. What's going on, ODB? Shout out to y'all for coming coming down. Um, Dr. Cavill unveiled his major poll yesterday, and I really want to get into it. I want to I want to I want to I want to dig in it a little bit. I want to give you my thoughts, and I'm pretty sure Jeff's gonna have some thoughts when he sees it. Jeff has not seen it yet, so this is gonna be fun. <laughs> um, so we're gonna go ahead and take our first break. And when we return, we're going to have the discussion point on the polls. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, grab me one, too. Brian Fulford, A.D. Drew, and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. This is the Dean of the College of HBCU Sports, Kenyatta Cavill of Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Come mix it up in the lab where the course lecture is in session every Tuesday from 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live, YouTube, Spreaker, or the BCSN app. As we discuss all things about the HBCU sports culture, including exploring the week that was in the sporting HBCU dash as well as the upcoming week of HBCU Sports. With me, the Dean, the College of HBCU Sports, on Dr. Cavill's Inside HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Watch and Charles Bishop. Course lecture dismissed. Choice Hotels is a family of brands that helps you get the most for your money so you can be any traveler you want to be. You could be a free hot breakfast hero in a comfort hotel. Yes! That's how you waffle! Mr. This Script got a plot twist at a Radisson Hotel. A business big leaguer! Go for key. Even the ultimate pool float inflator. With 22 brands and the best value for your money, Choice Hotels has a stay for any you. Book direct at choicehotels.com, where travels come true. Gotta get the corners. You can press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they're gonna tell you if your team, if they wanna love that. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, cause he gonna teach the lesson. Yes. Welcome back to Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. All right. We need to talk about Dr. Cavill's top seven polls. Um, shout out to Silas. And I, you know, and the thing for me when it comes to polls, everybody has a criteria when it comes to their polls. Um, but I know you haven't seen it yet, so I'm fascinated to see what your thoughts are, Jeff. And then we'll, we, can, we can bounce at it back and forth and have the discussion points about some of these teams. But, but I, before we pull the poll up, um, one thing I will say, I, this weekend, last weekend of college and HBCU sports, 
I I believe there's probably like five teams you probably can put at number five. Or just probably, mm-hmm. like, they're probably like five teams, right? Mm-hmm. I, so for me, it's at that point, you're just, you're, you're, some people goes off wins and losses. Some people goes about who they played. Mm-hmm. So you just kind of, it's a preference thing at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, I know, I know it, it's, it's all dependent on that um, when it comes to that. So uh, if you could bring up the poll and we can have the discussion on the poll. All right. So here's, here's Dr. Cavill's top seven. He has number seven, the Alabama State Hornets. Number six, the Delaware State Hornets. Number five, the Texas Southern Tigers. Mm. Number four, Tennessee State Tigers. Number three, the Morgan State Bears. Number two, the HBCU National Champion, Florida A&M Rattlers. And number one, the school down the road. And you can see the name up there. <laughs> so um, thoughts on... Dr. Cavill's top seven, and we can go team by team and have that discussion point. Um, let's go with number seven first. Alabama Absolutely. State. Now, I, I watched that game in its entirety, even though it was delayed, and I don't see like I bought it. I, I didn't buy into the hype. I would say earlier on in the preseason rankings, I did not buy in the hype last year, and. Just watching that game pretty much confirmed exactly what I thought. Um, their quarterback situation, not even as shaky. It, you have one quarterback who can't throw, but he can run. And the other guy just looks like he's a dink and dunker. And I'm, I'm just trying to figure out where, what is everybody seeing that I am missing? And for them to be seventh, I don't – I maybe there maybe there's i didn't watch i I didn't watch them a whole lot last year i saw a few games but um i just don't see the hype around alabama state like everybody else i feel like there are other programs that can definitely take their place um your thoughts on that so for me i i understood the hype because of the pickup of andrew body from the portal Right. So I I completely understand the hype from that standpoint. I completely get that aspect. Right. I think the problem I had when watching the the biggest dilemma I had when I was watching the game was that one, that defense wasn't the same defense, at least opening in the game. It was not that same defense. Number two, the offensive line Mm -hmm. was not nearly as good as I thought they would be. Yeah. And I'm, I, we don't even have to get into the quarterback play. <laughs> I mean, some of the points, most most of the points that they scored was off of broken plays. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. So for me, and I and it was when Andrew Brody was, was working miracles with these broken plays. Pretty much. So for me, I can understand him putting that seven, putting putting Alabama State at seven. I don't I don't have an issue with it. Mm-hmm. Um the quarterback situation is 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 gonna be fascinating to see. They have Miles College coming up this weekend. Yeah. Um, yeah. which is not a win is depending on the quarterback scenario mm-hmm. it's not going to be as winnable i understand the scholarship difference but miles is a pretty good football team yeah yeah so, there are no pushovers there's no push over here so yeah. from that standpoint i don't i'm not i could see it depending on the performance against miles alabama state falling out of the top seven to potentially the top 10 in miles i still have him in, yeah. i still have alabama state in my top 10 yeah, but I, you know, but I had them pretty high. Like I thought they were going to win the swag, but after what I saw, and it's week to week, and everybody can overreact, and I can do that. I have a habit of that. Yeah, um, yeah. But I, I don't. If he, they have to have a pretty good performance against Miles for me to warrant them to stay this high. This oh, ab- high. absolutely. No. And I, I definitely feel sometimes Eddie Robinson gets his gets too emotional on the sidelines. And I think it gets in the way of, I would say the X's and O's with that guy. So um, I would definitely look at programs like uh, Norfolk State, <laughs> even though, yeah, they, uh, Silas, yeah, they had a good defense last year, last year. I would have thought they would. I, I didn't, Do I expect them to have a step back? Yes, I would have, right? Yes. However, I didn't expect this step back, this this far back. And and that's, that's the point. Like, they they're missing some of the guys. Yeah, yeah. They're missing Bubba. Like it's yeah. it's, it's it's clear. Okay, right? so explain to me what happened to Bubba. He graduated. Oh, he did. Yeah, okay. he's done. Yeah, 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 he's, yeah done. he's done. Okay, all right. Yeah, I really like that guy. All um, right. Let's 
let's go to number six, Delaware State Hornets. I have Delaware State in my top five, so I'm not. Yeah, I, I'm not mad at this. And and yeah. part 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 of the reason I had them in my top five was I felt like considering all the circumstances those guys went through getting yeah. to Hawaii. Yeah, they fought in that game. Yes, they did. You could argue they had one so far. When you talk about FCS versus F, F, FCS versus SBS programs, they had a valiant effort, one of the better efforts against an FBS program. Oh, I mean, it, it was yeah. them. A and T. I thought Howard did well. Yeah. Um. I I feel like those guys had a valiant effort against those their FBS counterparts. No, uh, I, I I totally agree because I watched. I watched them play against Hawaii, and then I turned around and watched UCLA play against Hawaii. And UCLA struggled against Hawaii. Mm. So I definitely uh, feel that Delaware State quietly will creep up further, you know, because nobody has their eye on them. You know, Delaware State has been, I would say, uh, a, a seller program, I would say, for the past decade and even mm. more. So um, I, I mean, and we we got new coach, and some of the um, some of the old coaches um, came from Hampton's old staff. So yeah, I always, always knew that those guys could coach us if they got the right personnel. So possibly this could be it for them, where they could sneak up into a second or third place in the MEAC, or maybe first. Yeah, absolutely. I'm well. It'll be interesting, man. I, they yeah. they got they didn't get the best draw. I'll tell no, you that. No, I'll tell you that they didn't get the best draw. And I, I'm gonna say this: Sacred Heart really ain't that good either. But I no, mean, but 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 yeah. an FCS an out of conference yeah. win, like we that's we, big. We talk about all the time how it's important to win these games. Yes, and they won it, and they did it. So in I'm not, good, I'm, a, not I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to discredit it. All right, yep. Yep. you know. And they won that conference a few years prior, like they two did. years ago, they won that conference. They did. Yeah. So um, let's go to number five: Texas Southern Tigers. Big win against Prairie View A and M. First time they beat them in nine years. Yeah, huge win. My thing with Texas Southern is like they will have these blips every couple of years and then they'll go away. You know, I like they're a program that I really do not watch. Um, I always felt that they, they have the facilities, they got the stadium, and it's just like, why hasn't it not come together? I would say, as like a program like a Prairie View. You know, they're in Houston, so they're in a hot, uh, a really good recruiting hotbed area. So my thing with Texas Southern is it's the stability. And it's like it feels like there's always going through coaches. You know, it's just that I think that is a little bit too high for them. And I, go ahead. I, I, I don't now I'm not mad at I'm not mad at Texas Southern at five. And I'm gonna and, and the reason and you can it'll be close. Like okay. I don't have them at five. Like I had Delaware State at five, right? Yeah. So for me, I'm not mad at Texas Southern at five because, and and I and I said this last night on um, HBCU Nightly as well. A lot of folks questioned the coaching hire. I mean, a lot of folks. Yeah, questioned absolutely. The hire. Yeah. And for him to come in and pretty much pull this win, and it wasn't like a a close game. It was pretty mm-hmm. dominant, and a lot yeah. of folks yeah. expect Prayer View to make it back to the to the to the SWAC championship, right? Yeah, true. So to do that, yes, I I have no issue with with uh, Texas Southern at five. Um, yeah, I think um, you know it'll be interesting to see how they continue in the SWAC West and things of that sort. Um, but now I think folks' eyes have to open just a little bit because I think the West is wide open. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the I- West is wide open, so anything can happen. Like. I always dubbed Swack West chaos. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's it gonna, is. It's gonna come down to something like it's gonna come down to the final week. It might come down to the Bayou Classic. Like that's just yeah. how the Swack West is. Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree with you on that. I do like Chris Dishman's. Um, I would say that he brought a pr- like some of these coaches that he brought in. I've seen on the radar, and I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, and I think – and that, to me, I, just goes to the bigger thing with Texas Southern coaching. They, I would, I'm, It's one game, but you can definitely see how well – how much better they played just by this one game alone. My concern is, is had, has he rebuilt the culture in one game? And I still need to see more definitely with Texas Southern. But, you know, I would say good – Good job so far. I would put them maybe top 10 at the 10 spot. 
but I would kind of need to see what see more. And let's see who who are they playing next anyway? They are playing right. Okay, They're playing rice. rice. Yeah, rice like, like Lamar. We gonna yeah. be like it. We, you can okay. still see things in those type of games. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. like, I mean, I, we're gonna root for them to win. Obviously, yeah, right. Yeah. But it's just yeah. you know you, you gotta. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, Texas Southern play. They sometimes they play. Some of these SWAC schools play Rice hard for a period. So we, oh, I, yeah. I'm going to be keeping my eye on that game. I will yeah. say that. Yeah. So we Definitely. got no, we got number four Tennessee State Tigers. Um, <laughs> the score against Valley is in the increment of how dominant they were. They were up 31 nothing in that game. Yeah. Um. So I can understand it. Eddie George got. Eddie George has yeah. high expectations this year from the yeah. standpoint of they, there's the expectation for them to yeah. potentially win that conference this year. Yeah. So yeah. we're yeah. we'll see we'll see with Tennessee State. I, I think it's a little too high for me, a little too high for my taste. <laughs> um, and it's funny, I I kind of I kind of sent the sent the rib to Dr. Cavill because I felt like Howard should be up here, man. I know they played Rutgers, I know they lost, I know that I know you're not a fan of them. But I think Howard should be up here, man. Like I, I had Howard. I have Howard at three on my list. Okay. So I, I, I felt like Howard should be up here. I understand they play Rutgers. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But I felt like what I saw in that game. Mm-hmm. Um. Their fronts, man. They coming, bro. They coming, oh, for y'all. Oh, trust me. We we, we know. We know. <laughs> like when I, when I tell you. Folks are not just scared of how they scared of the next game coming up. And we, I know we'll get to it. But as far as Tennessee State, that quarterback, Draylon Ellis, man, 21 for 33, 356 touchdowns, three TDs. And I'm sitting here saying, like, they finally got that guy. And I really liked um, the the offense that Eddie George is putting around him. Then he got uh, the, the, the Dean kid. I forgot his first name. Nine receptions. I think he had about 140 something yards, one touchdown. Had a long 55 yard pass. I'm just sitting here, like, where has this been? It's always been a wait and see approach with Tennessee State, but I feel that he has, he got the O line in and he got the speed around him. So I'm really impressed with what they have done. I do think that they will be uh, a force in the Ohio Valley because just being, you know, we see it too in the CAA. There's not really no speed there. It's just big offensive line and defensive lines. And you can just definitely see the difference when they played Mississippi Valley State. And I I like them at four. Um, I would I would keep them at four, you know, because knowing what we see in these independent conferences. I think that they can definitely hold their weight. Oh, there's no question. They'll get the opportunity to, too. They're going to play Howard at, at Howard's homecoming this year. So they'll be, we're going to really going to get to see some things later on, later on in the season for sure. They spank them. I know you do. Number three, Morgan State Bears. I'm not mad at them at three. Um, yeah. My, I, I think, I think yeah. they have the best defense in HBCU. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I yeah. and I, and I, and I, yeah. and I'll, I'll stand by that. I think the only thing that stops them from winning the MEAC conference is an offense. Yeah. No, that's but the I, only thing that's going to stop them. But that offense has get, gotten, gotten better. I know we're going to talk about it in the next segment, but Damon Wilson, yeah. like that defense, oh, 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 man. Like, you got to understand, Elijah Burr, so I'm running back, you know, people are looking at him as CAA player of the year. He held that guy to very few yardage to the point that we had to say, okay, scrap the running game. We're going to have to put him out in space and just throw the ball all day. So I definitely feel that Morgan State doesn't not get enough credit as it should get. So I definitely like him there at three. Um, I won't ever put Howard in the top anything, but I mean, okay, that's just bias. But yes. Morgan State definitely with if – with a good offense, you know, definitely could challenge for number one and two. Absolutely. Absolutely. I completely agree. I think Morgan State, Morgan State, like I said, they're offense away, man. And I think we saw some of the some of that against y'all. And we'll yeah. we'll talk about that. Yeah. Uh, when we get into the next when we get into the next segments. That is a Torrance, I completely agree with you. You have to pass consistently with a with a combined with a strong run game. But I think the run game still Runs the got, show in, in yeah. that conference. Like you oh. gotta have the ability. Like trench play is so yes. important in that conference. Like that yes. was the big thing I saw 
last yeah. year with AT in their first year, but we can get into that. That's a whole show if I want to. Yeah. A, whole show <laughs> a whole show. A whole show. Um, but um, let's <clears throat> let's get the number two man, the defending national champion, Florida A&M <laughs> oh, Rattlers. Man, I'm not mad. Like I felt like you could pick. Yeah. Between them, the yeah. Rattlers, and the yeah. school down the road, you could pick. Yeah. Yeah. Either one, and I can't. I, I yeah. can't be mad. I had fam you number one. Yeah. Which is fine. Yeah. Um, uh, but and understandably so. But if you had that school down the road number one, got it. Nah. Not gonna argue. I'm not <laughs> not happy about it, but not gonna argue with you about it. No, no, I, 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 I can agree. I would just say this with fam you. Um, that slow start they had with Norfolk State. I know this is first coach coaching jitters. You know, but. Norfolk State, I would say, for that first game, they so much exposed, you know, that run defense. And I just I, – my first – I didn't know what to, uh, to make of Jay, of Colsey as a coach, you know. It's like every time you saw him on the interview, it felt like he was rushed, he was haggard. You know, you just didn't kind of get an idea of what his style was. But then when I watched him um, against Norfolk State, you know, of course he was down, but he literally shut them down for the second half. So he definitely has a, a, some very good coaching prowess. And I really liked um, how they have, um, I would say, tilted the offense to fit that new quarterback they do, they have. So I, there are some things that I would say that still gives me concern for them to be a number one team. But I would say so far, so good. Um that I, you know, I definitely feel like they're going to repeat in the swag and leading to that team that you don't like. <laughs> oh, man. That quarterback is nice. <laughs> that running back is nice. That offensive line is big. Yeah. And I'm sitting here thinking, like, yeah, I, I, it, it might be a lean year for y'all again, but go ahead, man. I, uh, I don't want to hear these things. Um, so here's my thing about FAMU. That's been their MO. Yeah. Starting slow has been their MO. Yeah. That that is one similar thing that we had they had when they were also had Willie Simmons last year. Yeah. I mean, they started slow against Howard, you know, they they and they started slow against South Carolina State and in Norfolk. So I feel like um they know how to close games, they've been there before, they know they've been there before. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they can continue that role in SWAT. Um, yeah, yeah. I before this weekend, I thought oh, Memphis State's gonna win the SWAT. I that it's gonna be a tough sell for me at this point. Um, mm -hmm. but you know, it's I think it's between FAMU and Jackson State, who's not on this list. And um, it, no, it's, don't don't get me started with Jackson State, man. No, no listen, man. I'm no, trying to I'm trying to protect your no. timeline, sir. Absolutely not. No, I mean, T -C I mean, I, I mean, those are. I think those are going to be the two that's going to duke it out in the ease of this. Yeah, they'll, they'll duke it out because there's nobody else. I would say probably could step up, but Jackson, ooh, no. And I and when we talk about the Miac and we talk about that school down the road, I think them and Morgan is going to be what it's going to be for. Yeah. Like that, the yeah, the Miac is so. It, yeah. There's so much parity in that conference, man. Yeah. And I and yeah. I and I. And I talked about this on another show don't be shocked that delaware state clip somebody yeah yeah absolutely they're and gonna clip they're gonna they're gonna cut they're gonna cost somebody a um a chance to win the when the they're gonna cost one of those guys one of those top guys a chance to win it absolutely absolutely and the the MEAC, i would say pretty much all the teams are similar you know uh dominant run games uh big backs you know, that's, that's the M.O. of the MEAC. And I definitely feel like if you go from top to bottom, like Norfolk State's line averages like 350 pounds. That center is six foot seven. I'm sitting here saying, good Lord, I'm, I'm just South Carolina State the same way. So, you know, that's definitely been the M.O. from top to bottom. So I do think that it will be this probably kind of feels like a the most competitive year the MEAC will have, you know. Oh yeah. Because none of these teams I would say are down teams or having down years so far. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So, but, all right, this was a good discussion point. So let's get into our next commercial break break. When we return, we're going to talk about our games from last week. Yeah. And your T's game from last week and Hampton's game from last week. 
<laughs> so we'll be back after the break. At AutoMasters LLC, our mission is to serve our community by providing quality automobiles at affordable prices. All of our vehicles are inspected and certified to offer you the confidence in knowing you have a quality vehicle. Our goal is to provide you with a seamless process and positive experience for your automobile purchase. Financing recommendations and specific vehicle inquiries are available at your request. You can find us at www.automasters06.com and like, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Also, please feel free to contact Terrence Miles at 601-927-7794. And oh yeah, tell him Sonya sent you. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna love that and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir, yes, and pay attention, boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. Welcome back to Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Jeff, Jeff is temporarily on assignment. He'll be back in a second. Um, while he's away, we'll we'll I'll start discussing AT versus Wake Forest. Um, so AT lost to Wake Forest 45 to 13. They did cover the spread, which was the positive thing from that aspect. But one, one thing that is clear right now is that um AT has a quarterback, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> As one, one thing is clear. AT has a quarterback, ladies and gentlemen. We got we have um sophomore Kevin White. He got the start against Wake Forest. He went 10 for 15 for 116 yards. Um, to put it in perspective, last year in our opener against UAB, we only threw for 16 yards. Um, and Justin Fabi is the backup. He's a grad transfer from Houston Christian. He came in and he went five for 10 for 36 yards. So we had over 152 yards passing um, in this game, which is a vast improvement from last year. Our offense looked really good. I felt like our offensive line did well. Um, we were able to push a power four team defensive line for a period of time. Uh, we had a couple, we had a couple uh, linemen that went down, but we found out that they were okay um, after the game during the press conference on Monday. So that is a good sign. Uh, we got it. We got, we got a one, two, three punch and running back, room so we have kenji christian he has 16 carries 121 yards westy graves 19 carries 70 yards over almost 200 over 200 yards rushing we lost yards from a, a play when the center uh hiked the ball in over kevin white's head and that ended up being negative yards that we got but overall man we we played a pretty we played a pretty good game um when you go up against these FBS programs, the big thing you have to start thinking about is you got to understand you have the scholarship deficit, but you also got to mm -hmm. see how the trenches play against them. And I think overall, mm -hmm. I think the trenches play well. Our defensive line did have some challenges. I won't kid myself with regards to that, but I think in the first half overall, we did well. I mean, we were in this game. We were only we were down 17-10 at the half, mm -hmm. right? We we took the lead at one point during the game. Um, I like to hop in other. I, I like to hop into other opponents' forums during the game occasionally, and they <laughs> were not happy in the first half. <laughs> and we had a kicker that kicked a 51-yard 51 51 yard field goal in that game that helped <laughs> us cover the spread. So I think overall I was happy with the results. Um, we got, we're got we going to talk about our games next week in the, after the break. But overall, I was thrilled with what I saw from the offense because I felt like last season our offense coordinator was – caused a lot of challenges from that standpoint we can get anything going and this this time i feel better about our offense and i think our defense is going to be fine um our defensive line bulked up 20 pounds 20 pounds average for the line so i think you know that puts us in line with everybody within the conference so i think we're going to probably have a legitimate chance to compete within that conference um but time's going to tell we're going to have we we got we have winston salem state this upcoming weekend, but the following weekend is going to be our conference opener against Delaware. So we're going to get an idea of where we're at before we go play that school down the world on September 21st. <laughs> so what about you, sir? Y'all had a look, man. I watched that game, Hampton versus Morgan. That was a barn burner, bro. That was a good game. Uh, you know, it was a definitely a good game. Um, you got to give hats off to Morgan. You know, they played one exceptional game. Um, we knew going into the game that, I mean, the fan from the fan for perspective that Morgan State was no pushover. You know, we both beat Richmond last year, 
And we knew that, okay, this is not the same old Morgan State. You know, David Wilson came in from Bowie, and we literally knew that that defense was going to be stout. Now, just by going on the stats alone, um, our, matter of fact, we, out, we threw 216 yards worth of passes, and uh, Ty Smith from Morgan State only had 75 yards in the air. He was sacked four times. We were sacked none, and we still lost. So that shows that our defense primarily, I would say, our defensive line to me was, I would say, something that was surprising for us because our former head coach was a defensive line specialist and we could never seem to get to the ball. But now we have an intern coach in here. Now we can get to the ball at will. We can get to the quarterback at will. So these were things that we were seeing. We were like, okay. But the biggest issue was Ty Smith, who I wouldn't say he was a great passer, but if it was third and 17 or third and 10, and we had a few third and 10, third and 12s where we got to him, but he was able to wiggle out and sc scamper for another 15 or tw 20 yards for a first down, you know, this, these were the backbreakers that we had during these games. So um, I think there was a couple of coaching miscues that, you know, we had, uh, primarily an onside kick to start the game. We did an onside kick. They recovered, and within three plays was in the end zone. I mean, if you were, I would say for, I mean, from a fan's perspective, if your your defense, I would say, is shaky, if your secondary is kind of shaky, doing a um, <laughs> doing an onside kick on to start the game, I understand the surprise, I understand the aggression, probably wasn't a smart thing to do. And the fact of the matter is we lost by maybe, what, two or three points? So that, that onside kick was crucial. So um, as for, I would say, offensively, we have two court, we have a two-quarterback system. I would love for one quarterback just to take the, take the reins and just get, win the job. We had Christopher Zealous last year who I would say pretty much was one um, uh, bright spot for the offense last year. He's, a, I would say, more of a running quarterback and a, a read option type of guy. And last year he was great, but I, Morgan pretty much was ready for him. You know, they basically just tried to keep him in front of them. And he ended up throwing some bad picks, you know, got, got pulled. Malcolm Mays come in. I would say he's more of a, a polished passer, but sometimes he feels like he's unsure. But he did have, um, I would say, 185 yards. So, the passing game is okay, but Morgan State's defensive line really stopped our number one rusher in Elijah Burris, who was in all types of preseason polls, the CAA preseason polls. Some even voted him to be CAA player of the year, and he only had like close to like what forty five yards, forty three yards, fifteen yeah. carries. I, I was I yeah. was kind of I wasn't I was stunned, yeah, because of how good he's he he is, yeah. But at the same time, man, that shows you how good Morgan State's defense is. Exactly, man. exactly. It got to the point where his only score came from he had to literally run out in space, and they just did a little um, uh, swing pass to him. And it's just that I, for us going forward, our biggest improvement always, always will be from week one to week two. And so for us, Virginia Union is coming. So. Hey, we're cool. going to talk about that one after the break because I got exactly. some thoughts. I got exactly. some thoughts, man. So, but overall, I would just say that um, we had some, I would say, some key moments there. Uh, certain players, Kevin Johnson uh, was was pretty good. Uh, three catches, 70 yards, one touchdown. And uh, But outside of that, you know, some of the other guys that we were expecting a lot from, Kamari Gray, Christian Greenlaw, you know, Moultrie, Dorian Moultrie, we didn't really see. So... Just offensively, we need playmakers, and we lost one last year in Roman Copeland, who transferred to Austin P. And so, so if we got another, I would say another uh, playmaker out in the slot that can create space, we'll be okay. Yeah, man i I watched that, and it was a really good game to watch. Yeah, um, the game yeah. was on. The game was on Flow Sports. It was. It was. It was a good one. I. I, yeah. I was concerned. Y'all yeah. might have been the best team to handle the two quarterback systems so far that I've seen. 
Yeah, well, I, and I agree that yeah. you should have just one guy. Like, yeah. I, I, I'm not a believer yeah. in the in the the QB platoon system, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I and I and I felt like at the end of that game, if you're gonna pick somebody, I think Michael Mays won that job, and I really yeah. do. Like, I think Michael Mays won that yeah. job. Like, and I, you know I, what? Go ahead. No, go. You no, know, you finish. You finish. Now, I, I just feel like he he was more poised in the pocket. Yeah, he was able to execute, and he could scramble a bit. So he can, yeah. he gives you the best of both worlds. He yeah. didn't turn the ball over. Yes, yes. So yes. like for me, I felt like after that game against Morgan, he's won that job. But, oh no, absolutely. Interesting about both of those QBs, they both started in in successive seasons. Malcolm A started two years ago for a full season, and Zealous last year for a full season. And the former, uh, I would say, the former uh, co- um, offensive coordinator, Zach Peterson, who left um, this past year, he, uh, I would say, statistically did well passing with Mays. But running, they led the they led the conference, and they were top five in the nation in rushing with Zealous. And so it's like, pick your poison. One can't throw, the other can only pass. So... We'll see. I, we we prefer Mays, but against Mays kind of fades against bigger opponents. So you'll see. Zealous right. had one big games last year for us. Oh, absolutely. Y'all won a decent chunk of games last year in the CAA. So, but I want to go in and take this final commercial break and talk about the games that we have next week. So we'll be back after this. If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is Always Ultra Thin's reinvented with the Always Triple Protection System. This pad wicks gushes 90% faster, absorbs even more so you can feel dry, and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay. Call Cuvay. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they're going to tell you if your team, if they want to love that. And who the ball? Who the ball? So listen to Professor Yes Sir and pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. Welcome back to Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Um, so now we're at the final segment. We're going to discuss the games we got next week, and we're both going up against old school CIAA rivals. And for a and it's the first time of us playing Winston-Salem State University since 2010, and the last time we played them, they did beat us. <laughs> um, but I, but then they were in the MEAC, and you know, A and T was going through their A and T was going through their super funk. Crazy enough, in 2010 they went one and ten too. Yeah, go Ooh. figure, right? So, um, yeah. so my thing when it comes to the Division One, the FCS Division One HBCUs versus Division Two HBCUs, these games aren't supposed to be close. Yeah, like yeah. they're they're not they're not supposed to be close. There's a scholarship deficit. Um, you should, in theory, you should, your trench play should be large, should be bigger. Mm-hmm. They, there's, you should have better skill position. But there are some Division two schools that got some guys and got guys that can play. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They can play. And uh, Winston's got a quarterback, man. Yeah. Um, uh, Dalen Lee, he's legit. Mm-hmm. Um. So man, y'all are really beating us up, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> they, it's a, it's really a whole. Are. That's a. That's a whole. I, that's a whole episode about the yeah. A and T and Hampton's decisions to move, right. to move out of the me act. But I don't want to get into that today. We gotta get over that, yo. Le- leave it alone, man. It's, it's done. <laughs> Please stop. We're not coming back. Like we will never come back. I'm I'll sorry. never say never. I'm well, never. Okay, gonna, right. well, I'm I, never I, gonna say never. Yeah, we're, it's not that no. we're never gonna come back. But like what the agents say, save 
face, we are not going to do that. We're not. Y'all going to, you would get at us for centuries about that. So, no. Yeah, yeah, it, it'll come and go. It's like social media. Things come and go, right? Exactly. So, so I think for a and with what they did against Wake Forest, yeah, they should be able to to dominate these guys. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, and and I, and I believe that in my soul. Like they should be able to dominate these guys. I would be concerned if this game's close, um, because I feel like we 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 got a new OC. We brought in a lot of good recruits. Our quarterbacks got more experience. Got got another season on, under his belt. I think we should be able to dominate these guys. Um, I think Winston's going to surprise folks in the CIAA. Yeah, but I just think it's not going to be their day on Saturday. Like I just i i don't I don't believe it will be. I'm going down to the game. Um, so that should be a fun. This is my first time going to an A and T Winston Salem game mm-hmm. because when I was a student, they didn't play each other. Mm-hmm. Um, so it should be a phenomenal matchup, to say the least, between A and T and Winston Salem State. But I expect it to. It'll be a historic matchup. It's a rivalry game. Hopefully, we won't have to wait 14 years to see it again. Mm-hmm. Um, but I expect A and T to to roll in this one. I, I truly do. Your thoughts? No, I, I definitely feel that they'll definitely roll roll this game. Um, you. you <laughs> I would say that Brown has really recruited like his guys. And Mm -hmm. I really, from what I saw against you guys against Wake Forest, that's a, it felt like a totally different team from last year. Okay. I wouldn't say totally different, but it felt more of, I would say if that was his personality, strong, you know, smart, because he always talked about intelligence. So they felt like more of a, a CAA program. And Winston Salem is a program, you know, they're I would say a flagship C8 CIAA program, but from what the horses that AT has, you know, it should not be close at all. I mean, it'll probably be competitive for maybe half a quarter or a full quarter, but I just don't see a uh, Winston Salem, you know, putting up mo- no more than maybe seven to ten points on the on the on the board. So all right, so we have we have a couple. We only have five minutes left, so I want to get to your guys because sure. you guys are playing Virginia Union. Yeah. yeah, and let me tell you something. Yeah, what they did to Kentucky State was not fair. Kentucky State's a junior high program. Nah, I ain't doing that. <laughs> nah, I ain't doing that, man. Sixty nine on answer points. Nah, I ain't doing yeah. that one. Yeah. So, yeah. so here's my concern with y'all, and I'm gonna be honest. Sure. I'm sure. very. I'm. Jada Byers is real. Yeah, 211 rushing yards. Jada Jada Byers is real. Yeah. And I and I feel like I'm very concerned yeah. that if you guys don't show up, like y'all did a really good job stopping the run. No, y'all didn't do that good job stopping the run against Morgan. No, we did a terrible yeah. job. So I got to confuse what Morgan did to Burris. So you guys have to figure out how to stop Jada Byers. Yeah. This is going to be rough. It will be, but I will say this though: we got a defensive line now officially, so um, we don't have linebackers. That is our own. Yeah, that is our issue. That is an, uh, that is a concern. I will say this though: uh, we will probably will have to be offensive this game. So a lot, and I'll say this too: Alvin Porter. Um, was it Porter? Um, was anti um central's coach um oh trey oliver yeah yeah no no no, not miss central i'm virginia union's coach i'm sorry his name his name escapes me but the name escaping me too yeah um you got me thinking yeah alvin what's that guy lord have mercy um gerald yeah alvin parker i was right alvin Uh, Parker. parker okay he's a joe taylor disciple so if you under like for us we reason why we're so scared because This is a Joe Taylor imprinted program. Joe Taylor, the AD, brought in a Joe Taylor-like disciple. Everybody that is on his staff believes in the same philosophy that Joe Taylor had. Big offensive lines, big defensive lines, big running backs, possession-style receivers, control the football, control the clock. And when we lost to them in 2019, it was a Joe Taylor game. It was his big moment to stick it to Dr. Harvey. And every time 
And the players have taken on that actually mantra from him. And so they're going to come into Hampton with the exact same mentality. Now, they did come uh, – I think we played them back in, what, 2022, 2021. And it was close for uh, two quarters, and we finally blew them out. But I do feel that this will be a definite problem because Jada Byers, 211 pounds – I mean, 211 yards. He ran through Kentucky. Now – Will he run? I know he's not going to run through us like that. I will, God, um, I, I hope not. But I, there is cause for concern because we do have a problem stopping the run. But we got some good coaches, you know. Hopefully that they, they they know what we're we're going up against. The fans are putting pressure on it because we do not want to feel that embarrassment that we we had in 2019. And I promise you, it was horrible. <laughs> Like it was like you gotta understand because we were in the big south then, and like the message boards from Hampton losing to a CIAA program from them big south fans, they didn't even know that Virginia Union existed, and so it was like, Oh, you're such an embarrassment, and it was just t- terrible. Yeah, so you're talking about the big south. Imagine if you, if you guys. CAA. Man, oh look, goodness, all, man. all I can just say is, look, guys, he's an intern. He's an intern. <laughs> but um, He's an intern. He's an intern. No, but no, no. Real talk, real talk, real talk. We really like – a lot of us really like him. And so I want to see him succeed. But you cannot lose to Union. You can't do it. I'm sorry. Jada Byers has to hold him to at least under 60 to maybe 80, then we'll have a game. And this is he, he's gonna get a hundred. Y'all just need to hope he doesn't get two hundred. The problem, yeah, exactly. But the problem <laughs> is, why is he at Virginia Union and not at Hampton or at A and T? That's my issue. It's like, how did y'all let him go there? I'm yeah, sorry. That's true. That's true. All right, we got to close out. Thank you for listening to Inside HBCU Sports Lab. Make sure you follow our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I'm David Rhodes. This is Jeff Johnson. And shout out to Dr. J. Kiana the Dean of HBCU Sports, for the opportunity. Um, we hope you enjoyed. And again, we want to thank you for listening to Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. And the, this is the Indy Report with myself and Jeff Johnson. And make sure you check them out tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time and, not, and Sunday, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. We look forward to next week as we discuss the latest news in the lab. Make sure you follow Dr. Kenyatta Cavill on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. All right. Course, Jeff. Oh, oh, man. oh what are they saying? Oh, oh man. man. You just as bad as me last week. It's okay, man. <laughs> Roy, Roy, help him out, man. Roy, help him out. Oh, man. It's all right. Lecture. <laughs> Roy, you, Dave, you you said the course. Uh, <laughs> I did say the course. Yeah. So uh, lecture and dismiss. Dismissed. <laughs> <laughs>